So today's video, James, by the way, with my, my breeder supply, I love my pups. We're going to talk about small litters, litters of a single puppy or zero litters. What went wrong? What can you do next time? And what are the problems that you might have with that small litter? All right. So let's talk about the reasons that typically the reasons for a small litter. And I'm gonna put these in order of where they went wrong. One, timing. If you AI'd early or late, it's gonna impact litter size. You, the window of opportunity for maximized litter size is about one day either side of optimum time. And we'll talk about that more in detail in the next video. But the fundamental reason I think is that small litters is, or no litters is you've got the timing wrong. Um, and there's a number of ways to get the timing right. Progesterone test, behavior of the dog. Um, there are various different products that you can buy that let you test progesterone. We'll talk about all of those in the next part. So timing, number one reason, get the timing wrong, small litter. And by the way, another part of that timing thing is, is that you're, you're not doing progesterone tests, you're just breeding the dog based on dog's behavior and you're breeding every day. And what happens is you don't realize it, but you're breeding early. You breed every day, and finally, after about four or five days, you're really at the right point, but by this point, your dog has already been pulled four times, and his semen count is super low, and when you need him to perform, unfortunately, you're just getting prostate fluid, and you result in a small or no litter. So that's another thing about timing, is, is how many times do you breed, and when do you breed, is also part of all this timing issue. All right, so um, number two uh, would be uh, quality of sperm. Quality of the semen. So how was this done? Was this done with a natural uh, AI, a natural uh, mating where the dogs are side by side and just kind of getting together and doing it? If that's a proven stud, great. If it's not a proven stud, how do you know if his semen's any good? Someone needs to either know that he's had puppies before and decent litters, or you need to have his semen evaluated. So we want to know what the quality of semen is. If it's being shipped to you, then what kind of a shipping system are they using? Are they using a system that's got a good chance that the, that the semen's gonna arrive in good shape? Um, if it gets delayed, those are typically problems where you can really have problems with semen, specifically if you're not using our Shipmate product. And the reason I say that is because our Shipmate product will allow you to have shipments that can last for three days in the shipping, and then a further, you know, up to 10 days total in the fridge because of the extender that we use. So you can get semen early, and if the semen's been delayed in shipping, it's still viable. The passive boxes, which is what most people are using because they're cheap, don't work very well, especially in circumstances where you've got a delayed shipping or cold or, cold or hot weather. So again, you'd like to evaluate the semen. You'd like for somebody to be able to look at the semen and say, yep, this is a good, this, this is viable. You need to have a 200 million motile sperm. That's what you're aiming for to get it. Now you can get away with less than that if you're doing a TCI or a surgical because the semen doesn't have to swim up the vaginal tract. That's why you do those breedings a day later. And a lot of this, 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 the sperm dies in the, on the trip, and if they don't have to go, but if they're right implanted right where the uterus is, they don't have to go on the trip. So poor semen quality would definitely be a time that you'd want to elect to probably go ahead and have an, a TCI, transcervical insemination or a surgical. But 200 million motile sperm is what we're looking for. And if you had a sample that had 300 total, 300 million sperm, but 50% of it wasn't viable, so 50% of it's viable, then the reality is we've only got 150 million sperm to work with. And that's kind of a low number. Decent load, half of it was dead, ends up with not such a good result. So again, somebody needs to be, if possible, you, you, you would like it if you can evaluate the semen. All right, so the next thing would be uh, technique. <clears throat> Specifically, are you getting the semen to stay inside the dog? I've got videos on how to do AIs, and, and I, I can tell you that, uh, and I don't want to bash vets because I love vets, don't get me wrong here, but I see a lot of times that people have used vets and they come back and they report back to me, say, yeah, we did the AI, dog said it went well, put the dog in the back of my car, and now there's a puddle of semen on the back seat, does it matter? <laughs> yeah, it matters. So the thing that vets don't have is a lot of time. 
They're, they're already stressed. They've got other people waiting in the, in, in the waiting room. Uh, they've got people stacking up. They've got vet techs coming in and saying, Mrs. Jones is here with a dog that's been got a broken leg, it's been run over. They've got other dogs to look after. And so consequently, they can't spend the kind of time that you would spend if you did the AI yourself. When I do an AI, I spend a minimum of 30 minutes with that dog's butt elevated as I'm doing the AI. And you can go look at my videos on how to do AIs. But the important thing, it's not difficult to do, but the important thing is time. You've got to let this semen work its way into the uterus and get soaked up inside the dog. Because if you just, if you just have the dog sit, standing on a table, you AI the dog, give you the dog back, it's quite likely that quite a bit of that semen is gonna come out of the dog's back end. If you are in that situation, where your dog has been AI'd at the vet and then five minutes later they give you the dog back, go get, get in your car and put that dog's head between your legs on the ground with its feet on, front feet on the ground with its bump, rump up on your, on your leg and let gravity do its part. So you can help that situation. All right, technique. Okay, so number four, um, absorb puppies. So you did an AI or you did a breeding and um, 30 days after that, you did an ultrasound or a, um, um, a relaxant blood test and the dog's pregnant. Great, wonderful, all good. You're waiting for puppies to show up, dog's not getting any bigger. And then you finally go back in and maybe do an x-ray or an ultrasound when you're close to the C-section date or, or whelping date and you find there's no puppies inside. They got absorbed. And, you know, I don't have an answer as to why that happens. It does happen. I don't know what are the circumstances that cause that to happen. Stress, malnutrition, some underlying problem are all potentially reasons for this, but exactly how you pinpoint that, I don't know, other than what the next one comes up, which is gonna be an overall health of your dog. So if you've got a dog that has uh, been having problems getting pregnant, go, do a, go to your vet and get a blood panel done, get a CBC, complete blood panel done, and pay attention specifically to thyroid levels or any levels that look out of whack. You know, if the dog has got an underlying problem that you're not aware of, fix the problem. Maybe the dog can never get pre pregnant because of that. And of course, there are some dogs that never can get pregnant, but they're very far and few between, but it does happen. Okay, um, all right, so let's now talk about so there's, there's, the, there's five reasons why, in, in, in somewhat in order, most likely to le least likely, of, of, uh, of what's going on. And of course, of these things here, these three, the most significant ones, they're gonna be the bulk of the reason, you can absolutely fix those. Those are, not, those are things that are under your control that you can take actions to make sure when you breed it next time that you get it right. <clears throat> and look, there's another thing here as well, and it's just called bad luck. Look. Not every dog gets pregnant every time. Some dogs are definitely hard to get pregnant than others, and sometimes it's just unlucky. You can't find any reasons why this went wrong. Go back, do it again. Um, all right, let's see, what was I gonna talk about next? Well, I had it in my mind and I got off on a sidetrack there. Um, singles and puppies. So let's talk a little bit about what the problem is that you're gonna likely run into with a singleton. Single puppy, a single puppy. So here's the first thing. You ending up with a single puppy, what, for, probably because of timing, and that means that this puppy is either gonna show up early, or more likely it's gonna show up late. You're waiting to do the C-section, you're waiting to have the mum have puppies, and nothing's happening. And it's two or three days past the due date, you're getting anxious. The reason for this is because Number one, you're probably AI'd early, and that makes it seem as though the puppy comes late because the actual AI date has nothing to do with whelp date. The AI, the, excuse me, the, the whelp date has nothing to do with the AI. It's all to do with when the dog ovulated. And if you AI early, you just lengthen the time before the puppy show up, so you kind of get anxious here. So the next thing that happens is, is that when a single puppy, it doesn't give the kind of signals to mum to make her start dropping progesterone levels to induce whelp. And it also to induce milk letdown. So it's quite often that you'll see singles of puppies go long and when they do come, mum doesn't have milk. And mum may never get milk. So be prepared, we well, used to always have these things, but always have goat's milk, either fresh or powdered. Have, um, a feeding bottle, so we use a human bottle 
with a silicone zero to three months nipple. You should always have those things anyway, because you never know when you're gonna have a puppy that needs some extra help. But you're very likely gonna be doing this for the first day or two after you've got your puppy home. And you may have to continue doing it because mum's milk may never come in. But if mum's milk doesn't come in, leave mum with baby if you, baby and mum together if you can, because just the action of her suckling, even if she's not getting anything, can help with the milk letdown, help milk come in. Um, by the way, I didn't mention this in the very first part of reasons why you didn't get your dog pregnant. So we put, we're gonna put number six in there and it's really about second or third on the list. Young dogs, young mothers, harder to get pregnant, harder. So typically most dogs will have their first um, heat between six months and a year old, second heat about six months later. Our advice is don't breed any dog until it's at least a year old and preferably a second heat cycle, which is normally the case for dogs that are over a year old. But the problem with these youngster dogs is their progesterone levels are just bouncing around with what we call split or extended heats. Um, and I've got videos on, on that. But what happens then is it's hard to get the timing right. So it goes back to this timing issue and it's because you've got a young dog. Um, all right, so that, that was something I should have put on the first part. So I'll get that off the, off the, off the now. So look, here's some other things, by the way, where we're talking about things you should have on hand. Um, you know, our whelping system, we love it. We've got thousands of people using it. We sell incubators. You should have an incubator on hand. Uh, you know, what are you gonna spend on an incubator, incubator? You're gonna spend, you buy one of ours, about 310 bucks. Oxygen machines, also very useful to have if you've got puppies that are struggling. What's you gonna pay for one of those from us? About 475 bucks. If you're going to get serious about this, you're going to do much of this breeding, you absolutely should have those two things because I promise you there'll be times that you'll save puppies that otherwise would not have made it if you didn't have those two things. And by the way, our puppy care kit is something else that I think you should have. And this is an easier thing for you to go get your own stuff, but there's things in that care kit, it's a $99 product. It's got all the things that you should have on hand in preparation for having puppies. All right, so I think we are now done with this. And I think we're basically ready to go on to part two, which is gonna be uh, what you can do to help maximize litter. So this first part was what happens and what was the cause of you not having a big litter or a zero litter. Second part, if you wanna watch it, is gonna be what can you do to step in to fix these problems? All right, next video coming up. Thanks for watching the, the video. Uh, I really appreciate people who subscribe to me. It helps me, encourage me to do more of these videos. But do remember, disclaimer here, I am not a vet, I'm not a licensed medical professional, I'm purely a person who's been breeding dogs for the last couple of decades. Any information that you got from this video, use at your own risk. There's nothing implied here, and certainly this should not be used as a substitute for advice from your veterinarian or your medical professional. I hope you enjoyed the video. Come back for more of them. Bye. Mm -hmm.